今天我非常感谢大华的这么多的朋友来参加他的纪念会，然后大华他是呃今年八月底左右，呃就诊诊断出来他得了肺癌的，就是第四期，可是我们家人总是抱着很大的希望，认为他可以慢慢的可以。就是可以复原，或者甚至可以延长他的生命。他在病中得到了很多朋友的关怀，有的就是打电话来送花来，然后有的甚至煮菜送鸡汤。所以他非常感到朋友给他的这些温暖，他非常感激。然后。我非常感谢，嗯、呃，你们的朋，你们这么多朋友对他的厚爱，跟鼓励。大话，今天看到你们这么多人来参加他这个追悼会，他心里一定是非常非常的在天之灵，他会得到，他会感到很安慰。你这一生活得很圆满，也很充实。你有四个非常。孝顺的孩子，还有七个非常活泼可爱的孙子辈、孙辈。你，你是你父母的好儿子，孝顺的儿子，你也是我的好伴侣、好丈夫。你是四个，你是一个好父亲，所以我以你为傲。哎呀，谢谢大家。家里面大概跟我大哥吵架最多的就是我。我大哥不是一个很听话的小孩，在小的时候，任何时候发生任何的这个调皮捣蛋的事情，他一定是当当当头的。所以因为这个原因，他也能够出来创业。他是一个没有任何惧怕的人，能够一个人十九岁单身到不行。一个人只有几十块钱，能够坐着火车，就一个人到了东部找家里的朋友，然后在这个把我们几个弟弟带上来，住家做工，还一个人做两个三个工，所以我们可以有足够的学费。大哥，随时在帮助我们，在我们这个心里是一个无法取代的一个柱子。我们长大了，自己到外面去打拼，可是呢，心里很平稳。为什么？任何时候背后派一个大哥，是我们的支柱。那么，大哥现在走了，这个心理上这个永远无法取代，尤其是走得太快。呃，我们大家都已经到了退休的年龄，本来想着可以多聚一聚
，那么他这下就走，所以这是很呃与众不同的事情。大哥，尤其是对父母亲特别的这个孝心。他也算是他这个事业有成就，能够替我母亲生病的时候找人来照顾他，开始表示，这对于其他的兄弟来说是一个很大的安慰。我们没有这个能力，可是大哥就也没有讲究，就做了。所以大哥在。别人不知道的情况下做很多的善事、呃，也不需要人家赞美他。他的个性是一个大而化之的人，小事情不太注重小节，啊，这个是一个很难得的一个这么一个早修，来这么一个分享。小说，哎，鱼有容颜，鱼有容颜。我骄傲地说，张大华是我的哥哥。Proudly, I shout out, David said, "Is my brother." 他是一个温文儒雅、随和风趣。平易近人，大而化之。他同时又是中流砥柱，勇往直前，磨定而重，悲天悯人。我从小就是他的忠实的跟随者，也因此更能感受他对我的特别照顾。从小到大。他处处都为我们考量。他最喜欢鲁迅的一句话：“横雷能对千夫子，俯首甘为孺子牛。”那我今一次简化的方式来纪念我的大哥。千夫子能容乃大，孺子牛从善而化。在商场上，他要面对这样多的困难，他能够包容各方面的意见，能容乃大，而有所成就。孺子牛，他甘心情愿照顾家人，尤其对孩子们更是深爱不已。从善而化，他不是细心要做些什么，顺从情况而已，能够造福很多很多人。在中华文化潜移默化的情况下，他深深的了解，教育乃一国之本，必须提升普及基本教育水平，他才能够达到脱贫的首要任务，打破恶性循环的噩梦。因此，身为孺子牛，他愿意。投入他所有的力量，悲天悯人的心情，尽一己之力，不为人知，而且以他大度的商业方面的管理方式，使这一教育贫穷地区中国的朋友们能够永习不久。进而使中华儿女有更好的前途。谢谢大哥照顾我们，而且
在各方面都有完美的成就。他常常说，在 s i l i c o n Valley 这这么多有能力又努力的人，可是呢，得天独厚，有这么多朋友的帮助，使他能够。有所成就，这是上天独厚给他的。他也希望能够扶助其他人也有成就。再谢谢朋友们跟我大哥合作，有了如此的成就。嗯，最后我要谢谢嫂嫂，能够在家中当做后盾。所以我大哥能无后顾之忧，奋勇向前，做他愿意做的事情。谢谢。最小的弟弟，现在该讲的话都讲了，我只能回忆一下，我常常想到大哥这种事情。那大哥呢，是我从小以来的弟兄，既潇洒又性格的帅哥，那么很小的时候，他读高中，我小学的时候，呃，有一段怪事，我们调皮的事情，就是、说我帮着他偷偷到储藏室里面拿啤酒，我们一起喝啤酒。当然，爸爸妈妈不希望我们这样做，我也不爱喝那个啤酒。可是我那个时候身材很小，我去没人注意到，他说你可以去，我就说，很高兴的接受这个任务，然后毫不犹豫的，担心情愿的替我的偶像做这件事情，然后就喝起啤酒，所以我是这样一向就，大哥的事情就是一向是我心中的英雄。大哥，辛苦奋斗几十年，已经是成传奇人物了。传奇人物的这个戏谷的科技巨头，呃，大企业家，国际性的慈善家，你完成了潇洒的、完美的一生，应该没有什么遗憾了。那我和你是，应该是应该是多生多世的姻缘，今生成为兄弟，希望今后还能成为同修，减少我们自己的业障，增加我们的善因。那么，我们已经请了法师，啊，给他念的经典，然后希望都回向给他，希望他能够安然的待业往生极乐世界。这个西方净土，那我也发愿，发愿就说，七七四十四十九天，我一有空，就发心念南无阿弥陀佛。希望在座的朋友，这个 I was almost like an afterthought. I was relating a some mischievous events when we were when we were kids. You know, I was little. He was in high school. I was before preschool. Somehow, I managed to steal some beer for him. Okay. No one wanted us to do that.、Uh, my parents didn't want it. I didn't even like it. But he was my hero. Whatever my hero said, I would say yes. So willingly, wholeheartedly, I said, "Okay, I'm doing." I got the beer. We shared it. <laughs> Such was the memory I had with my big brother. Throughout the decades, he worked so hard. He accomplished so much. He's a legendary figure in the. Silicon Valley. He's a, you know, in the high tech field.、Uh, his entrepreneurship, his philanthropy, he has accomplished so much. Is is a like a respect and envy of most people. Okay, I don't believe he he has any regrets at this time. You know, for him to, and I to be brothers, we have many. Lives of connections.
In addition to the support we received from family, we want to thank all my parents' friends for their overwhelming support this past year. My mom wants to thank the members of the Xingxing Educational Foundation, all my dad's Taiwan Elementary School friends, my dad's Data Technology Oak Technology co-workers, his Acorn partners, as well as Cloudship members. So many people have reached out with support through phone calls, texts, cards, gifts, and flowers. We have been overwhelmed, but in a good way, by everyone's care and concern. In particular, we have been gratified by the support we have received from Sandy Chow, his visits to my dad and help with business affairs. He's been a true friend to our family. We also want to acknowledge Dr. Larry Huang. Um, he was my dad's urologist. It's hard to find a doctor like this anymore, someone who treats his patients as family. Dr. Huang went above and beyond in making sure my dad was taken care of when he was in the hospital. Because of COVID-19, we were not allowed to visit my dad. Dr. Huang took time out of his busy day to check, on, to check in on my dad sometimes daily, FaceTiming with us so we could talk and see how my dad was doing. And he also bought my dad sushi for lunch and even got special permission for a giant asahi beer. I know that must have made my dad's day and we are indebted to you, Dr. Huang. We all thought we had a little bit more time to spend with my dad and it just, it, I guess it's just hard to let go of someone you expect to be a constant in your life. But we are very grateful, grateful for all the time and moments we're able to share with him this last year. Um, through my dad's hard work and perseverance, he made things happen. And we're all proud and inspired by what he has accomplished in his lifetime. And I think my Uncle Chester might have some something you may want to say. Dear Dad, this last couple weeks I've been going through family photos and remembering all our good times together. I'm very grateful at how fortunate we have been to have a close-knit, harmonious family. And I want to celebrate the great father that you have been to me, Lena, Stephen, and Victor. Every year for the past 20 years, if Victor, Stephen, Lena, or my family didn't have an obligation on a Tuesday evening or a Saturday morning, we would meet up once or twice a week to eat together. In a Chinese restaurant, you always made sure never to leave out the order for beer and always ordered too much food. It was our comfortable weekly meetup only stopping last year due to COVID. You worked hard all your life and you raised a strong family. Between mom and us siblings, we communicated and worked together smoothly during this last year when you were dealing with your greatest health challenge. While I never saw you in the boardroom or negotiating your deal, I remember you telling me how you never worried about losing money. You knew you could make more. Despite the stress you must have encountered in your work life, you always projected a positivity, which why I always thought of you as fearless. You came to America on your own. You had to earn your own tuition money in the summers, hauling potatoes, working in restaurants and country clubs. You left your first stable job at age 32 at Hewlett Packard within five years to do your first startup. I remember you took a skiing and even when you were pretty much a beginner level skier, you decided to go down a black diamond run and you broke your leg. When I was young, I worried about your health because you worked such long hours. So it was a relief to me later in life when I realized how fulfilled and excited you were about the work you did. You had a competitive streak tempered with a lot of compassion and a need to be active. You got involved in a steakhouse business and real estate investments when you were financially doing great and could easily have gone on endless vacations. At a time when most of your friends were ready to retire, mom always said you would never consider going on a vacation that went over two weeks. With what spare time you had left, you devoted to supporting Asian community causes. 
We hoped for more conversations with you, but we were influenced so much by watching you live your life intently pursuing your happiness. When I was still in school, many of my friends and I were at that stage in life where we were searching, wondering what we wanted to do as we considered what our parents expected for us. While you had more traditional Asian values, you never told me what to do, only reminded us that whatever you choose, just do your best at it. When I made mistakes, you didn't bring it up, you rarely raised your voice, you offered support, and you didn't judge. You accepted that my life path didn't look like your life path. You accepted my choices because I was satisfied with them. You trusted me, so I learned to trust myself. Now that I'm a parent with the responsibility to raise compassionate human beings, I am applying what I learned watching you. You are the greatest man I know in my eyes. Intelligent, hardworking, fearless, and kind. We will miss you always, but we are comforted in knowing you lived the life you wanted. We will honor your memory by living right and passing that on. To my dad, thank you. To say thanks to all my aunts, uncles, and cousins who reached out to my family, offering their condolences and help during my dad's illness. When it was first discovered that my dad had cancer, we were all shocked and dumbfounded how this could happen. A man who loves to drink, but never ever smoked, contracted lung cancer. Thankfully, <clears throat> Uncle Chester was there and became like an on-call doctor who told us to call him anytime, at any hour, whenever we had questions. We were in uncharted territory and it was a blessing to have a second opinion we could trust. Knowing that my dad <clears throat> wasn't very mobile, Uncle Chester sent my dad a harmonica and sheet music to his favorite old song. I never knew my dad used to play the harmonica, but Uncle Chester thought it was something he could try to pick up again in his free time. Aunt Helen told us that fresh air would help out my dad and gave us an air purifier for his room. All of my dad's siblings, Aunt Helen, Uncle Douglas, Uncle Robert, and Uncle Chester visited my dad multiple, multiple times and tried to spend time with him whenever he had the strength to sit up and stay awake. They did some Zoom calls together where they would sing and try to lift his spirits. It was during this time that I heard a lot of Teresa Tang and Tai Chi and was reminded of my childhood as they would go see karaoke at Bamboo Garden and Homes of Friends. I would also like to thank my Aunt Nina and Uncle Jerry during this time, Aunt Nina helped my mom out a lot buying groceries, cooking dinners, making his favorite foods, and giving my dad head and foot massages. She never complained and always said she was happy to do it if my dad wanted it. My mom could always rely on her sister. She helped my mom through the stress and anxiety she was experiencing. Uncle Jerry helped to transfer my dad to and from the hospital when needed, also brought food weekly to the family, and also lend emotional support. I always saw my dad as being invincible and able to solve anything. Most everything he barked on, he was able to accomplish. I never worried when he was around. Now that I have time to reflect, I realize another of his important accomplishments were all the long lasting bonds he created with family, friends, and community. He was a very kind and generous soul I hope to follow in his footsteps. Goodbye. This is my mom. But throughout his life, uh, she has remained so supportive of his many endeavors and <clears throat> has been caring through his many trials. And even in his final month, when he had the energy, he would sometimes wake up in the middle of the night and tell me how lucky he was to have my mom and ask me where she was. So, for over 50 years, my mom has <clears throat> been at his side and taken care of him and held his hands until his final moments. And together, they raised four children and lived a wonderful life. And when measuring success in one's life, I think this could be one of the best examples of his success. <clears throat> uh, and Mom, I think 
I can speak on behalf of myself, Elaine, Lane, and Victor, in thanking you for all that you have done for Dad and his family. You were the love of his life, and all his successes are your successes as well. Thanks, Dad, for picking such a wonderful wife and mom, and for all your hard work over the years. You are loved and will be truly missed. Dear Dad, this last couple weeks, I have, been go I have been going through family photos and remembering all the good times that we've had together. And I am grateful that we've had this close-knit, harmonious family. I want to celebrate the great father that you've been to me, Lena, Stephen, and Victor. Every year for the past 20 years, if Victor, Stephen, Lena, or my families didn't have an obligation on Tuesday evening or Saturday morning, we would meet up once or twice a week to eat together. Um, sometimes in a Chinese restaurant, you always made sure never to leave out the order for beer and always ordered too much food. It was our comfortable weekly meetup, only stopping last year due to COVID. You worked hard all your life and you raised a strong family. Between mom and us siblings, we communicated and worked together smoothly during this past year when you were dealing with your greatest health challenge. While I never saw you in the boardroom or negotiating your deals, I remember you telling me how you never worried about losing money. You knew you could always make more. Despite the stress you must have encountered in your work life, you always projected a positivity, which was why I thought of you as fearless. You came to America on your own. You had to earn your own tuition money in the summers, hauling potatoes, working as a cook in restaurants and country clubs. You left your first stable job at age 32 with Hewlett Packard within five years to do your first startup with a colleague. I remember you took a skiing and even when you were pretty much a beginner level skier, you went down a black diamond and you broke your leg. Um, when I was young, I worried about your health because you would work such long hours and it was a great relief later in life when I realized that you found work so fulfilling and exciting. You had a competitive streak with a lot of compassion and a need to be active. You got involved in a steakhouse business and real estate investments when you were financially fine and could easily have gone on endless vacations. At a time when most of your friends were retired, I remember mom always told me that you never would consider going on a vacation if it went over two weeks. With what spare time you had left, you devoted to supporting Asian community causes. And as a family, we always hoped for more conversations and time with you. But we were influenced so much by watching you live your life intently, pursuing your happiness. When I was still in school, Many of my friends and I were at that stage in life where we were searching, wondering what we wanted to do as we also considered what our parents expected for us. While you had traditional Asian values, you never told me what to do, but reminded us that whatever we choose to do, we should do our best. When I made mistakes, you didn't bring it up. You rarely raised your voice. You offered support and you didn't judge. You accepted that my life path didn't look like your life path and you accepted my choices because I was satisfied with them. You trusted me, so I learned to trust myself. Now that I'm a parent with a responsibility to raise compassionate human beings, I'm applying what I learned watching you. You are the greatest man I know in my eyes. Intelligent, hardworking, fearless, and kind. We will miss you always, but we are comforted in knowing you live the life you wanted, and we will honor your memory by living right and passing that on. 
Goodbye, Dad. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thanks. On behalf of my family, I want to thank Sandy Chow, Betty Yuan, and Ding Ding TV for all the time and effort they have spent putting this memorial together for my dad. And thank you for all those who have joined today. I know my dad would have been humbled yet gratified by all your support. Thank you so much. Yeah. 